Senator Shelley Moore Capito, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you all? We are quite well. It's a pleasure to have you on this lovely Friday morning here. Hey, I'll take Friday anytime. <laughs> so I have this uh, press release, and maybe you can connect the dots and explain how funding for the Inflation Reduction Act may have contributed to some of the protests we've seen on campuses throughout the course of the winter and spring and, and now to this first day of summer regarding the uh, situation in the Middle East between uh, Israel and, and Gaza. Well, it's interesting because uh, we know that there are uh, a lot, billions and billions and billions of dollars in the Inflation Reduction Act. I said at the time, you put this much money into the system uh, as quickly as they want to, it's, there's going to be fraud, there's going to be a lack of transparency, and that's what uh, I've done. I've found that uh, through these, some of these climate funds, that the EPA is distributing funds uh, and in this particular case, $50 million to an organization, Climate Justice Initiative, which on their websites and uh, through their uh, advocacy has been very anti-Israel, very pro-Hamas. Uh, they have, uh, they fund, you know, they're in favor of not funding the police. They're not in favor of any kind of enforcement at the border. And for the life of me, I can't figure out uh, what these positions have to do with uh, you know, environmental justice. And so I think it's a fraud. I think it's a fraud. I don't think the administration is, is, uh, looking at these organizations. I think they are just, uh, trying to get the money out as quickly as they can. And so we found, and, and we found also several other, imp, uh, organizations that, uh, are very, what I would characterize almost as anti-American that are receiving funds from these green climate funds that are a direct result of the Inflation Reduction Act. How are these funds effectively used to foment protest on campuses? Well, what they do is they, you know, any organization that's going to get fifty million dollars uh, is going to, um, and and when they advertise on their or, or they show pictures of their activities or they have a protest in the Hart Building in in the Senate and they end up getting uh, arrested, uh, this particular organization, Climate Justice, uh, you know that if they're getting fifty million dollars, they're supposed to be you know, helping communities that have climate issues, but they're obviously using it for their whatever political agenda they, they would have. I mean, money's fungible. We know that. And I, I just think we ought to do better vetting here. I don't think the administration is looking at these organizations. I think they're just feathering the cap of organizations that they think, you know, help them politically and otherwise. When I first saw that, I thought this was like one of those things on Twitter where you're like, oh, this is this is kind of a stretch. But you connect the dots pretty directly there, Senator. Well, yeah, there's another organization, two organizations that are affiliated with Fordham University. So this particular climate fund says that you have to have a, uh, a uh, community service organization to help you distribute these funds. And we're talking $600 million in this one particular fund. And yet you go to the websites of these organizations that Fordham University is partnering with, and it's all anti-detention, anti-deportation, anti-ICE, anti-police. Uh, and it, it's, uh, th these are very extreme organizations, and they're getting our tax dollars. Where do you do next in this situation with this information public? I think any time you do oversight, which is a part of a function that we should be doing, we should be doing it uh, the way that uh, I, I am through EPW, is you start to follow the money. And when you follow the money, you find out where it's actually going. And and so I think, you know, you have to question administration officials. We've had letters to the officials. You know, they've sort of tried to sort of muddle it over by saying, well, we're still in the process. Well, they had a press conference announcing this with the vice president there. So I, I would hardly say they're right in the middle of it. And uh, basically, we've just unearthed, I think, and this is just the beginning. I think a lot of these radical groups are really uh, being funded through these uh, large pots of money that the administration wants to get out quickly uh, to, to serve their political means, but also before, if there's a change in administration, before this funnel of money can stop. Is any of this potentially illegal? That is probably uh, a good question, but I don't believe it's illegal. I don't think, you know, the, uh, obviously uh, when the Democrats passed their Inflation Reduction Act, they wrote it broad enough 
so that they could uh, could do uh, how whatever they wanted with it. It didn't, it, you know, it's, it, the categories of where you're going to help people. The last category, I, I can't even remember what it is, but it's so broad. It's like well, you could bake chocolate chip cookies all day, and that would still qualify. So, which is sounds good, doesn't it? It but, does really. Um, bake them on the sidewalk you know, so, today. Right. That, yeah, you wouldn't need a you wouldn't need a uh, an oven for that today. So I, I think that you know there, there's plenty of loopholes in there that I don't believe it's illegal, but I don't think it's serving the taxpayer well, and I think it's a lack of transparency at the same time. And what's the end here? It's supposed to be helping, uh, you know, in communities that have have, have been um, uh, subject subjected to climate change and haven't been treated fairly. Not if you're out protesting in the Hart Building about uh, Hamas and Israel. They even have on their website the picture of the bulldozer of Hamas going through the, the fence there on October the 7th in, cel- in a celebratory way. And, you know, that's offensive to me. Senator Shelley Moore Capito, our guest on the program today. She need, has a meeting at 820 she needs to get to, so we'll be quick. Uh, Bill, go right ahead. Uh, good morning, Senator. Good to talk to morning. you as always. Uh, I'm confused with the word cli- or the term climate justice or environmental justice. I've never heard those two used together. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Bill. It is laden with this administration. In uh, The president has an executive order that all cabinets, uh, all cabinets uh, must have a environmental justice office. Now, a lot of them have an environmental justice office that they've stood up because the president told they have it, but there's nobody in there. And uh, you know, part of the uh, part of the philosophy of environmental justice, I think, is value. Let's say you're, you've been living next to a uh, um, a, a, a large industrial plant that has not been uh, careful with emissions and uh, and and you're living in a community where you can't sell your house and nobody wants to move there. You know, you, you're being basically because of the environment, you're being treated. Um, you're not be- getting the justice that you need. But to me, it's just a whole blanket. They don't even define it. It can be anything. And so uh, and, and that means it can be everything. And that's what it is. It's, it, it's a buzzword for the uh, environmental community. And uh, there's buckets and buckets of money in it. Uh, every every bill they want environmental justice money. Thank you, Mr. Gilstrap. John Gilstrap. Good morning. Yes. Hey, John. I'm kind of a solutions guy. Over the course of a couple yes. of years, we spent trillions of dollars between COVID and and Inflation Reduction Act. That a lot of it yes. hasn't yet actually been spent. Can we get it back? You know, we have clawed back some of the rescue dollars uh, that were put out during COVID. Uh, for instance, uh, some of the business uh, um, benefits that were put forward during COVID have been clawed back for other bills. So, yes, you can claw it back because a lot of these bills, as you know, the, the spending is uh, over a five-year period of time or maybe even 10. So, yes, you can claw it back, and, and it has been done, and it, it will continue to be. And there are other programs, not just IRA or Rescue Plan or that uh, – you know, you create programs that you think are going to be two hundred million dollar programs, and only you know fifty million of it all may, may be used. You can claw that money back, yes, because it it continues funding over several years. It's not just one year funding. Can we do that for climate justice groups? Yes, yes, we would, but you know, you'd have to have a change of administration, uh, and that's why I think the money's going out as rapidly as it is. Uh, in anticipation that there might be a change. But yes, you, you definitely could for the Inflation Reduction Act, no doubt. And do you have a couple of minutes to tell us about nuclear power coming to West Virginia? Yes. Well, I'm really excited about uh, Bill. I've worked hard on for over a year. We worked it through the process, believe it or not, the committee process, Republicans and Democrats working together. These are the small modular reactors, which is not your grandfather's nuclear reactor. Uh, it's They're small, they're compact. They're obviously emissions-free, and it's new technologies. And we want to get these licensed in the United States to help with the what we know to be a huge demand for power. Uh, I'm still very pro-natural gas and coal and renewables, but nuclear has been underused here and in this country, and I think it holds great promise. So one of the things in my bill I put was that you could use a an abandoned coal-fired power plant uh, footprint – where you could put a small nuclear plant there, that would bring back your employment, bring back economic benefits. 
it would be greener, but you can also use the transmission that's already there. So it makes it simpler. I mean, they're doing this in Wyoming right now, but we just have to get these licensed, and that's really the crux of the bill. And we also want to make sure that our American technology is the dominant technology in the world. We cannot give this up to China in places like Africa or Europe where they're looking at nuclear. And these are smaller. You, they're more nimble. You can stack them. And so uh, I'm excited about it. I think in West Virginia has passed enabling legislation to bring nuclear and I think West Virginia has some real possibilities here. We'll definitely be looked at. Senator Capito, I know you have to go. Final word is yours. Well, you know what? Yesterday was West Virginia Day. It gave us a chance to all uh, tout our horns, uh, tout our uh, our creds on being uh, West Virginians, whether we're born here like me or whether we've come here like others. Uh, we know it's a special place. So I hope everybody had a good West Virginia Day and uh, have a good weekend. Stay inside if you if you can't take the heat and uh, and just we'll just power through it. Thank you so much for joining us. Much appreciated. Okay. Good Thanks, to talk. Thank you.